Hi, my Italian translator quit this morning, so I'm sorry. You're going to have to <laughs> bear with me here as I do this in English. Um, there are three things you should know about me. One, I'm a karate expert. Watch out. Two, I used to break dance for senior citizens. And three, I have a degree in marketing. Um, I started my first company. It was called Sliv and Dullet Enterprises. And our, <laughs> our motto was, we make problems for your solutions. Uh, <laughs> That is my partner over there, John Brummett, a.k.a. Kyle Sliv, and that's me, Bert Dullett. We had great names, I'm telling you. And um, what we did for our, our company initiation is we, we staffed New Langton Arts Gallery with 30 artists to help us make our summer line of products and services. And this ranged from the Swiss Army cubicle, which is back there, um, to office in a tent. And um, that's me looking exceptionally creepy, uh, greeting somebody in the waiting room here. Um, Sliv and Dalton Enterprises, you know, obviously went belly up, so I had to find a new line of work. So I created the 25th annual sample gum chew-off competition. <laughs> it was really the first, but 25th made it look like it was established. Um, <laughs> I was the only one who entered, so naturally I won, and, and you know, that felt really good. <laughs> Yeah, so I made this rule that I had to chew the gum for 10 seconds or the judges would disqualify me. There were no judges. I was alone in a room. That's 83 pieces of gum, folks. I, I later learned the gum causes mouth cancer. Uh, I then started the errand feasibility study to determine the most effective way of doing your errands. And um, one of the stages was to do your errands by pack mule. And so that's Hale, the mule on the left. And that's a very, very confused man with his pants pulled way too high on the right. <laughs> Here's a bit of that. Hey, can you bring pets inside? Yeah. How about a mule? What? A mule? Uh, sure, why not? Okay. <laughs> That's great. All right, Hale. All right, come on. Hale. All right. All right, come on. We just need to. No, he does actually, so be careful. Oh, wow. So we just need to return this. I, I can't really use it very much. But um, I got a receipt. So, um, you know, throughout all these projects, I had uh, a real job as a photographer assistant for furniture catalogs. Uh, it honestly was like watching paint dry. It was incredibly boring. But one day, I was given an opportunity to express my creativity. And, and that meant I could write something on a dry erase board that was featured uh, in a product. So I wrote Dinner with Mark and then wrote my real cell phone number underneath it. And I promised everybody on set that I would take whoever calls it out to dinner. And uh, a little did I know that this event would change my life entirely. You may not have seen him, but perhaps you've seen his phone number. <laughs> a man who's traveling around the country having dinner with strangers. Mark Horowitz is here, everybody. He's right now. All Mark Horowitz wants to do is have dinner with strangers. Have you ever looked at a catalog and seen a phone number and wondered if it was real? So I was working for Craig Merrill as a photo assistant, and uh, I wrote my name and number on a piece of furniture. It was photographed, printed, sent to millions of people. Once the catalog made its way to people's homes, Mark's phone started ringing. This call, taking a chance across the You could be a stalker, floor. and you know, maybe you are. Are you out of your mind? Why would you do this? Why would you put your cell phone number out there? As strangers, there's not, I mean, there's so much to learn about that person. But a strange man can offer himself up for dinner, and people this is a sociological I was wearing grapes there. Sorts. I was hoping yeah. she would take one and person. eat it. Fly to it like, like bees to honey. I mean, the metal, it doesn't make any sense. What kind of people are the people who pick up the phone when they see a phone number in a catalog and call you? Just said, hey, this is Mark. I want to take you out to dinner. There's lawyers, there's doctors, there's sociologists, there's students. There's married couples, there's families, there's people with disabilities, there's people in the Philippines. I got an email from somebody in South America. It's everybody. It's crazy. It's been a very interesting experience. <laughs> so my truck, I uh, bought this really crappy RV. 
<laughs> and uh, yeah, there I am. I'm hitting the road in this thing. Area code 510-872-7326. Mark Horowitz, artist and creator of the National <laughs> Dinner Tour. God yeah, bless thank you. Tour. America. <laughs> So I received about 30,000 phone calls from this experience. I mean, my phone was just ringing constantly. I would just pick it up, hello, and there would be somebody there. Um, I, I traveled the country then for a year trying to have dinner with as many people as possible. And I drove around in an RV, a uh, recreational vehicle, with a fuel tank leak. So I was huffing gas all day. It was really, it was really miserable. But I was in People Magazine as one of the hottest 50 bachelors. Thank you very much. I'm still single, if there's <laughs> any ladies. We can talk after the lecture. <laughs> so the dinner tour landed me smack dab in the middle of the art world and the entertainment industry. And I was asked by E! Network uh, to do a TV pilot for them. And honestly, I don't think they knew what they were getting themselves into. And I'm sorry to the executives that greenlit this. Here's okay, one of the clips from the TV show. <laughs> Come on, this is way better than keeping up with the Kardashians. Oh, there it is. A after this, I was asked by Nissan to do a national advertising campaign with them, where I lived in a car for seven days. It was called Seven Days in a Sentra. And this is like 12 seconds of one of the spots. I did it. Lived in my Sentra for seven days. Done. Okay, enough. <laughs> enough of that. <laughs> I love to take my shirt off, if you haven't noticed. Uh, so I, I then did a show here in Lake Como um, at the former AMT gallery. And um, this is uh, the shin guard armor, and it's made for people that can't afford health insurance. Um, the, sh <laughs> the show is called More Better. And uh, after this show, uh, a collector from Geneva saw it, and she wanted me to create a piece in her house. <laughs> This is a tribute to the United States of America in a closet in Geneva, Switzerland. Uh, you open the door there, and underneath that shelf is a motion detector, which triggers the lights and the lovely song of the Star Spangled Banner. Then you have these paper cutouts of the Statues of Liberty stuck to the tops of Humvees, um, which is a, a nice touch. In the back there, you have Mount Rushmore's uh, on uh, VCR tapes and CDs that were in the closet. You have the flag there stuck in a cassette tape, and um, they're all encircling the flag uh, because that's the way it should be. Some closet stuff, you shut the door, and everything stops. I then did a uh, web series for SonyCrackle.com, and it was called the Signature Series. And up to this point in my life, I didn't have a signature. And my therapist said I, I should get one so I have a sense of identity. <laughs> Okay, so I made a signature. I then signed a map of the United States, and then I drove along that route while improving 19 towns along my journey. Uh, Nampa, Idaho was one of the towns, and this is what I did there. I like to take my shirt off. And We're open for business. I'm still single, just so you know that. The first ever anonymous semi-nudist colony in Nampa, Idaho. Hey guys, do you want to express yourself without really expressing yourself? There's jean shorts if you want to take those jeans off. Okay. And ski masks are complimentary. Uh, semi-nudist colony, sir? Anonymous? Nope. Ma'am, how about you? What? Want to put a ski mask on and take some clothes off? Fight the good fight, people. Just free yourself of that shirt. Oh, take, no. How about just the watch? All you have to do is shed some clothing. OK. And then you put this on, so no one will ever know who you are. No one's going to know. Just come on in. I can't believe okay. it. I'll cover, I'll cover you a little. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Nude and anonymous. This is so much fun, people! Uh, <laughs> there you are. 
I then had the good fortune of having my, uh, my high school's hometown of Paradise, Indiana fall on my signature's path, and I made a commercial for my high school. Are you an eighth grader looking for a high school? To get your ass enrolled at Castle High in Paradise, Indiana. As a graduate of Castle High School, I'm super pumped to get you pumped about Castle High School. Rah! All right, you get the idea. <laughs> Anyhow, so shortly thereafter, the recession hit, and our economy was, you know, in the tank. Um, everything was a mess, and my bank was about to shut down. So I created the Recessionator, which is a device uh, that I use to make paintings with my body. Um, I would jump onto a trampoline and my assistant would plunge paint into the air and it would hit my chest and then I would belly flop onto a canvas, um, thereby creating these magnificent paintings. Um, I took them to my bank and offered them for free and, uh, so they could sell them in auction and, and then bail themselves out of the fiscal crisis, thereby relying upon artists to get them out of the mess they got themselves into. They kicked me out. <laughs> So my friend Pete and I, we wanted to take a road trip. Um, he lives in Richmond, Virginia. I live in Los Angeles. Uh, we were both extremely broke. We didn't have any money, but we were gainfully unemployed. Um, so we had plenty of time. So we decided to take a virtual road trip on Google Maps. So we would zoom in all the way on Google Maps and then press the arrow keys to drive forward. Um, it took us nine days to drive from Los Angeles to Richmond and we broadcast the entire experience live on uh, Ustream.tv. This is the setup of what it looked like. And here's a couple of clips. Dude, we are in a weird ass place. I have such ADD. You mind if I take off my pants? You've confused me. Your sheep costume's in the trunk. I'm gonna stare at the sun. Does it have a bathtub in it? Because we're gonna need to fill that with ice. It's a weird life you live over there, Pete. The Shabbat and the three legged calf. <laughs> Okay, geez. Um, so as we drove, you know, we stopped as normal tourists do. But instead of actually seeing the sights, uh, we experienced them in a different way. Um, for example, we stopped in the Grand Canyon, and we looked up videos on YouTube, white water rafting on the Grand Canyon. And then we would watch them. And so this is us rafting on the Grand Canyon. And then when we got hungry, we'd stop at a fast food restaurant, because that's what you do. And then in real life, we would run out to that fast food restaurant, grab food, come back and then bring up a picture of that restaurant and then eat together in the same restaurant. And so <laughs> this is us in Burger King discussing the wide open possibilities of increasing the size of ketchup packets. Um, <laughs> I was exhausted by this point doing all these projects and all this driving. And I literally spent like four days in bed. And all I did was look into the corners of my room and just watch dust collect. And, and <laughs> yeah, I, I was um, unemployed. And, uh, and so I was wondering what it was thinking, what it was doing, did it have a brain, how did it get to where it is? So I made, uh, the title is a drawing. I can't get in there. Okay. It's like, terrified of the broom. Okay. Go for it. What's here? Honestly. Just get a smaller piece. I can't do it. Just get a smaller piece. I can't. Well. Okay. Okay. It's fine. I can't. I can't get in doesn't there. Doesn't have to. Doesn't hey. have. Doesn't have. Hey. To. Oh. Yep. That's good. It's like just the right amount of um, hmm. casualness. You got to be exhausted after putting yeah, dust in the like corner. It looks like effortless the way that it's there, but if someone's really paying attention, they'll be like. Oh, that's a nice touch. Uh -huh. Where'd you go? I'm right here. Oh. Uh, Homer Simpson once cried because five seconds was too long to wait for his food to cook in the microwave. Um, 
I was wondering, what if Homer Simpson was right? What if five seconds is too long for anything? So this inspired me to create these films uh, called Untitled Films. This is Untitled Film 3. Don't blink. Seeking trade does it. And this is Untitled Film 4. I was then driving home from school the other day, uh, and I, I saw this man who was dressed like he was from another planet, and he was sitting in the middle of a bridge eating Cheetos and just staring at traffic. And it was, it was one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. <laughs> I'm, I'm easy to please. I'm still single, by the way. <laughs> um, and, and so I was wondering how I could reimagine moments like these and present them to a live audience. Uh, so. I made these things happen, um, which is a two-minute theatrical production. Uh, two minutes, <laughs> a, a very short attention span. This actually happened. Somebody was sleeping outside in front of my house one day. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Thank you.